Actors and models in South Africa operate in a competitive environment, so does it make sense to move to a market where the competition is even stiffer? It certainly did for him, Marsha Venkatsami, who headed for India to make the most of the opportunities that its fashion and film industries have to offer. She's now an established name in Mumbai and enjoys a jet-setting lifestyle from her base in Hong Kong. Himasha returned to South Africa recently to celebrate her wedding with friends and family, and she invited Mela to join. A Durbanite by birth, Himasha Venkatsami was 13 when she began her modeling career. But she did the sensible thing and completed her BSc before heading to Mumbai to walk the ramp. She'd hardly arrived when she was booked as a contestant on the Kingfisher calendar hunt, which she won. She made her film debut in the title song of I Hate Love Stories and career-wise her star has continued to rise. But in the meantime, she's found her soulmate. And Himasha decided it was time to return to South Africa to celebrate her happiness with the people dearest to her. She'd opted for an old-school approach with multiple events. Welcome to the first of my wedding celebrations. It's so good to have you here and share this amazing, auspicious time with me. So come through with me to get my Mendi done. Apart from its spiritual significance, the Mendi ceremony is also an opportunity for friends and family to meet. To come home and have all my friends and family with me, it feels like everything is coming together. And you need that solid foundation when you're going into this new life together. Vijesh and I met in India. He's from London. Literally, I think it was love at first sight. Well, for him, he did chase after me three times and I said no. Perseverance will get you very far. We then moved to Hong Kong because of his work. And now we're getting married in South Africa. So, you know, the connections we've made and the friends that we've made, they span the entire globe. That evening, the Sangeet was held. Traditionally, this ceremony was an all-ladies affair. But in keeping with contemporary custom, Himasha's Sangeet was for everyone to enjoy. Sangeet means music. And nowadays, Bollywood hits have replaced folk songs on the playlist. The next day, everyone had an opportunity to relax before preparations began for the actual wedding. Everyone's in very, very high spirits, especially me. But I think it's normal to have butterflies uh, before the big day. My outfit looks fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Uh, I got it from India. Uh, amazing designers called JJ Valaya. They do beautiful handwork. I went for a very modern kind of look. So more modern on the actual patterns of it, but keeping with that Indian heritage work. You know, the gold thread, and I wanted the bright colors. I wanted to do old school red Indian bride, you know? The whole nine yards. Right, right, right. Good to go. Yeah, we're good to go. Meanwhile, the groom was getting ready and collecting his thoughts as the guests arrived at the venue, which had been planned on a secret garden theme. A tented shrine known as a mandap had been set up for the ceremony. In keeping with custom, the groom rode to the venue mounted on a mare and accompanied by his family. The wedding ceremony began with the performance of Puja to invoke the blessings of the Lord Ganesh, the remover of obstacles. When the bride arrived, our jaws just dropped. She was absolutely gorgeous, the epitome of a goddess. A cloth was held up in front of the groom to prevent him from seeing his bride until she was seated before him. Following tradition, the groom faced west and the bride east. They held hands and exchanged garlands. The next stage involved the exchanging of vows in the ritual of Saptahadi. I take your hand for prosperity, good children and happiness. You've been entrusted in my care for the fulfillment of conjugal life. 
I accept your hand for our common welfare. May you live long with me in love, concord and understanding. From today, let us surrender ourselves to each other and never be Sabdhadi can be translated as seven steps and requires the bride and groom to complete seven circuits around the holy fire or agni. Once this has been completed, they are considered to be man and wife. By applying a streak of vermilion dye called Sindharam to his wife's forehead, Vijesh indicated that she was now a married woman. With the ritual and formalities complete, the families could relax and enjoy the occasion, which many of them had travelled far to attend. We've got London meets Durban, they met in Mumbai, they're now in Hong Kong, so it's the whole international element to it. We had the coming together of our Tamil family and the Gujarati family. It was a fusion of these two cultures that we brought together that just created this extra special ambiance and experience. Himasha was a beautiful bride and together they made a handsome couple. I think with the Indian ceremony, the moment that I felt the most special was when I actually walked in. And I didn't expect it to happen, but this wave of emotion just came over me and I started tearing. Seeing all of our families, having both sets of parents, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, and all of our best friends made it an absolute dream. There was still one more celebration to come. This evening I was going towards that kind of Frank Sinatra area. I wanted to be more glitzy, glamorous, black tie affair. Keeping with that theme, I decided to go for off-white lace, um, something very elegant, very classic. So last little touches before I get to the Boma and back to my guests, and I'll see you guys there. The reception was exactly as Himasha had planned it, with everyone turned out in their formal finery. Standing, my incredibly gorgeous and talented wife and I. The party could then begin in earnest, pausing only to slice the cake before revelers could get back to cutting it up in Bollywood style. A big thank you to Himasha and Vijesh for inviting Mela to share in the celebrations, and we wish you both a long and happy life together.